Welcome back to the Always Reading Book Club. It is your girl Kiki Reader. And we're going to do the first book in a series. Now the name of this series is called Gaming the System. And there's about 10 books total in the series. So I'm not going to review all of those. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is just do the first book in the series. So you guys can kind of, you know, see if it's a series that you yourselves would want to dive into. There are some books within this series that can be done as standalones as well but with this particular story that we're going to dive into today uh there's two more books after this one but this review will hopefully help you decide if you want to dive into them or not so today's uh, book is by brianna aubrey and book one is called at any price the book starts off with a virginity manifesto so basically someone's put up an auction to auction off their virginity and the manifesto just basically goes into how uh throughout the centuries and through different cultures how people kind of bartered when it came to a woman's virginity how this could actually increase someone else's wealth if they agreed the you know the offer that was given to them the father of the family and so she's basically decided to take that back. She wants to be the one that profits from losing her virginity. And so it is now up for auction to the highest bidder. So we meet Mia Strong and she's an online gamer. She's also a med student and her mother got sick not too long ago and it kind of torpedoed a lot of the plans that she had. She has her BS in biology. She worked really hard to like get the degree in three and a half years. So she is in the final year, but she has like that half, uh, that last semester. She doesn't have to take any classes. And so she's devoting that to simply studying for the MCAT. When her mom got sick, she used a lot of her loan money to help her mom with the medical bills she also works as an orderly at the hospital and she's an online gamer she has a blog and she actually does get some revenue from that blog and this is also where she posted her virginity manifesto she lives in a studio apartment you know she's struggling she used to live with her best friend heath who she has known since eighth grade. Heath is a gamer as well. And he's actually the one who's like overseeing this auction. Now he does not agree with this. It pisses him off. But again, they've been friends since eighth grade. And even though he doesn't like what she's doing, he figures if she's going to do it, then he's going to make sure that she's safe. So he's going to be doing the backgrounds of the candidates or shall we say the highest bidders? <laughs> so he's got three in the running. And so far, the highest bid has been uh, three quarters of a million, $750,000. And, you know, of course, it's going to help pay any type of, you know, further bills her mom might have as long as pay for her medical school, right? She won't have to worry about trying to obtain more loans. So... This is a big deal. So this is where she kind of, okay, she's 22 years old. She apparently has never really dated. She's, you know, hyper-focused on becoming an oncologist, which makes me think that, you know, clearly cancer was what her mom ha either has or had. And... There's a list of things that she needs from these, you know, candidates in order to even kind of consider them. So she wants, you know, clean bill of health, no type of criminal records, anything like that. And so our boy Heath is going through making sure everyone is going to check off everything on her list. Now her and uh, Heath used to live together. But then he um, got a boyfriend and then they moved in together and she wound up moving into this studio apartment. It's crappy. You know, it's like over the garage 
of a craftsman house, which I absolutely adore craftsman houses. Um, but anyway, I digress. So she's going to go study with a guy named John, who was at an Ivy League school. Even though the school that she goes to, uh, Chapman, is a private school, and it is expensive, but she never got really the full story as to why he went from whatever Ivy League school he was going to, to Southern California, to Chapman. John likes her. Uh, he's asked asked her out multiple times she's always declining and I will say this you know if he's gonna keep subjecting himself to being disappointed like I can't I can't feel sorry for him but he winds up asking her about going to some shindig some charity function or whatever and immediately in her mind she's thinking you know oh my gosh expensive you got to get dolled up x y and z and then when she says you know she doesn't really do that he gets kind of sad or whatever and i'm like well again i can't feel bad for him because she's already told you no like a gazillion times you know so i mean there's that that's when you you know they've told be persistent i don't know about in certain situations because that's kind of annoying. She keeps telling you no, and you keep trying to get her to come out. Like, she needs to go out with you. You know what I mean? Like, no, she's not interested. Let that girl be. She kind of has to pacify him by kind of saying, you know, if I was into dating, it wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, but it's like, she shouldn't even have to do that. But people in their egos. But anyway, so he goes into study mode, doesn't say anything else about it. So he doesn't know about the auction because only the people that are on her blog you know know about this and she has a, a really popular blog and she's hoping that visibility kind of will work to her advantage but you know i'm kind of like yeah if somebody already offered seven hundred fifty thousand, i would say it probably did so I did forget to mention she did take her MCAT test a year ago and she scored like a 20. So it wasn't enough for her to get into med school. And that was around the time that everything started happening with her mom. And so again, that's when things kind of started to torpedo. So she's supposed to take the test again in three months. She's extremely nervous about it. Um, the next morning she gets a call from her mom. Her mom had tried calling her the previous night, but she hadn't had enough money to put minutes on her phone. Um, so she just shut it off, but she won't admit that to a mother because she doesn't want her mother to know she's doing financially as bad as she is. But apparently her mother's not admitting to things either. Um, we find out that when her mom got pregnant with her, she calls her, whoever her father is, a sperm donor. <laughs> he basically gave the mother a large sum of money to kind of go away. So it's like, if you're going to have the kid, here you go. And she bought a ranch with that money and she'd been doing really good. And then she got sick. It's like a dude ranch be, uh, bre uh, bed and breakfast type of situation going on. And then of course, once she got sick, she couldn't run it. And that's when she had to take a mortgage out on it. And so now she can't really afford it. There were notices that Mia saw the last time she went home. Uh, showing that you know she's on her last notice about to lose that ranch she also has another round of treatment that she needs to get as well so her mom did ask her like do you need some money and she's like no I'm fine you know but again both of them have their things that are going on they don't want no one wants to really admit that they need the you know help that they need you know it's kind of sad but that's clearly what's happening so keith has narrowed it down to two guys one's from new york another guy's from california not too far from where they are he's supposed to meet up with them in the next couple days and of course he's like again are you sure about this you know um he wound up putting in there putting in the um i guess what was required is like for a couple of dates to be had so they could kind of get to know each other 
but that pissed her off because that's not what she wants she's like i told you i want to go in get it over with get the money and go on with my life that's it and keith not keith heath builds web websites for a living that's his day job and so she needed the help with this and he kind of injected what he feels <laughs> you know she should have i mean he is her best friend you know he wants to see her happy uh so it is what it is we do know that something happened six years ago we don't know what it was she was seeing a therapist at one point she had to stop because she could no longer afford it and he's asking her if she's okay if she's fine and so again i'm curious just to find out what that's going to be about she has a chat friend that's called fallen one and they used to chat all the time and then he went kind of ghost on her a couple of months ago when she started talking about possibly doing this and he did not agree with this and so it still bothers her because she doesn't want to lose a friendship over this but at the same time it's her virginity and she's going to do what she wants she gets a call from Heath and he's like, okay, got to go meet the guy today. And she's like, I don't have anything to wear. She has this really nice uh, pencil skirt, but it's all wrinkly. She doesn't have an iron. And apparently he just broke up with his boyfriend that he was living with for the past two years. And he makes some snark remark about how Brian took the iron. So he's like, well, fill the bathroom up with steam, turn on the hot water. Maybe that'll work, you know, and they finally get to the meeting It's at this uh weston hotel and the minute she sees him she's immediately attracted this freaks her out because that's not her normal right and she we find out his name is adam drake he's 26 super rich he's in the tech world he develops games one would think that you know being that she's a gamer he creates games good pairing but apparently the fact that he's so blatant when he talks about sex, it's like she gets all squirmy. And when they start talking about it and I'm like, baby, you put your virginity up for auction and now you're acting like you don't want to talk about sex. It's like it, it, it annoyed me. Her actions in this meeting, like she really made me like she irked me because he blatantly was saying like you know he didn't want to use condoms she's like oh no 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 we're using condoms he's like well then if i'm spending all this money i've given the bill of health that i don't have anything he's like i don't want a barrier you know and he's like what was the purpose of getting of getting a clear bill of health and she's like well then i need at least six months of celibacy and he goes well that's not a problem she doesn't want to believe him because he's hot, right? So it's like, that's not possible. But again, it's like you're trying to nitpick around the situation. It's like, I'm sorry, I don't think anyone would want to pay some high-priced dollar for condom sex. I just don't, that doesn't make sense, you know? And I get that she's a virgin, but it's like, come on. Come on. So then he asked to talk to her alone. And it's still not a done deal yet. There's still a second guy that's a possibility. And the thing about it is what's freaking her out is this man has an effect on her. His cockiness, everything about him, it affects her. And she doesn't like that it affects her in a way that she likes it. And so she wants to back out of this, right? She wants to take him off the table because she doesn't like that she's reacting to him, you know? And again, him being blunt about sex, I don't think that's bad. Like, that's what you all are there to talk about, right? You are there to iron out the details of a deal for your virginity. Like, you put you put this post up, right? It, he, it's not like he was saying, like, disrespectful, rude shit. He wasn't. It's just that he was talking blatantly about it. That was it. It's like you didn't want to do any dates you said right you didn't want to get to know anyone so then when someone comes at you like okay well this is what it's all technical now it's like oh that feels so emotionalist but bitch that's what you said you wanted you know he had her write down her phone number and her address and had her sign an nda 
Um, basically she can't reveal anything on her blog, of course. Um, and she won't be able to like release details, like go into details of the whole situation. And she's like, okay, fine, whatever. She signs it. She's like, but I want a copy of that. And that's when he told her, you know, write your phone number, write your address down. He sent it. uh, He took a picture of it and sent an email to Keith. Heath, I keep wanting to say Keith, and it's Heath. He um sent a uh, photo to Heath's email, like right then, and he's like, but I'll have a physical copy actually, you know, sent to your address or whatever. And she's like, okay, fine. So he leaves, and then she's talking with her best friend Heath, and Heath noticed the effect that, she clearly that that guy had on her he saw it and he just kind of told her like listen we went through the different precautions he's like you know all that bondage stuff you know all of that's in there that that he can't do that you know he said your safety was important so he's been very adamant about following the things in the contract things have to take place in the u.s it's going to be overseas the banking accounts are in Cayman. The only thing that they slightly did illegal was the fact that they were kind of trying to iron out the deals on U.S. soil. But other than that, everything is going to occur overseas. And so she was trying to wipe him out saying, no, like, no, nah, we need to scratch him. And he was just kind of like, are you sure? You know, because you're dealing with multimillionaires they're all going to be alpha males. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what you thought you were going to get. So I think she clearly was was very delusional in the way she thought about it. And it's just, it's clearly showing. So Mia's back at her place. She is all keyed up, wants to look up old boy. So she looks him up. Very impressive career Adam Drake has had. Um, He sold his first company in high school when he was like 17 years old for like 3.2 million. And then he went off, started a company, did the tech, like a tech school thing for probably like a year, but then dropped out, started his own company. Been a blast ever since, right? She finds out he is the creator of the game that she plays, which is called Dragon's Epoch. D-E is what they call it. And that kind of made her go, oh, shoot, you know. But it also gave her this reason as to why she shouldn't do it because she her blog she actually um does like reviews when it comes to the game and so it's going to be a conflict of interest is what she feels and so she calls what's his name um heath and lets him know, uh uh-uh, uh, I'm not doing it. That's not, it's just not gonna work with him, you know? And so, old boy says, he's like, well, then you need to, you email him and you tell him. You know, it's only fair. You need to tell him. We fast forward a week. She's playing, uh, de and guess who pops up good old fallen one and so they kind of message back and forth and she decides now she's going to go ahead and she's going to tell him she's going to let um adam drake know she's not going to go through with it well she sends the email and she gets a response back quickly We also find out with his response, he's like, give me an opportunity to talk, you know, like, can we at least talk about this? And she, of course, sends back, it's not really necessary. I've made up my mind. She's going to go for a run. But when she gets to the door, guess what? There's a knock. Yes, it is Adam Drake at her, at her door, looking even sexier in jeans and a t-shirt. Because at the meeting at the hotel, he had like this um, suit on and he had the ones that have a vest underneath. And he was just beyond delicious to her. 
but seeing him this way with the aviator glasses, whole nother level. So she lets him come into her apartment. She's embarrassed, you know, because again, she doesn't have a lot, right? And he doesn't give any crazy faces or anything like that. He doesn't do it. Um, but he does tell her, like, he hears her stomach growl. So he's like, well, let's go get something to eat and we can talk. And thankfully she wasn't all proud enough to turn it down. She took up a hand and got a, went to go get her a sandwich. So they walk to the sandwich shop and they have a little conversation. He could see that she was still hungry because she only ate half her sandwich. Well, that's what she has to do. She eats half of her meals and she'll save it for later. But he could tell she was still hungry. So what he did was when the waitress came, he said, he ordered a, another sandwich that she had talked about earlier as in an additional sandwich, a sandwich that she was eating. And she said, finish. And he told her, finish what you have now. And she did appreciate that he paid attention, you know, that he saw that and he didn't try and bring it to light or make a big deal out of it. He just want, you know, okay, let's just fix that real quick, you know? So then they're talking about this auction. They're talking about the whole, you know, auction again and her thing is she wants to be in control okay that's great but it's like you're on someone else's literal dime they are paying for something from you and that's the thing when you start trying to trade come up bodies and stuff for your bodies and stuff you know it gets <laughs> it gets real real dicey they walk back to her apartment and he does tell her like i know why you're pulling out of this he's like you've had the same intense reaction that i've had that i that that you have towards me i have towards you that freaks her out because she thought it was like one-sided and then it's like nah he's feeling the same thing and he was able to describe it exactly how she was feeling so he winds up giving her a kiss it's beyond extraordinary to her she's never been kissed that way before um, in her life and so she of course waits about three days but then she sends him an email saying okay we're gonna go ahead and go with the original plan with you make a time within the next two weeks no more than three months out i've given you a list of approved places of where we can go and he doesn't respond immediately um the next morning when she wakes up though there is a response he wants to meet in amsterdam he gives her the name of the hotel um, what time and tells her the travel arrangements are going to be um, made through Heath I guess for her portion or whatever like Heath will make every you know set up everything for and you know looking forward to seeing her she got kind of pissed because she was like he didn't even ask her if it was okay where he had picked to go first of all it was a five star hotel I'm like it's not your fucking money. You're not paying for the hotel. So why do you feel like you need to have a pick in that? So there's a control issue. Clearly, we can tell someone took control from her. We don't know how yet, but we know it happened. Because her incessant need to have full control means someone took it from her before. And she doesn't want to relinquish it ever again. Um... So this, again, I'm very in interested in knowing what the hell happened to her. I forgot to mention um, when she tried to tell him about it being a conflict of interest, he had told her, you, you can always get someone else to write the blog for a couple months, right? Like he was making sure there was no way for her to like wiggle her way out of this. And the truth was that had nothing to do with it. You know, it was just the reaction that she had to him and it freaked her out. Um, he admitted that, yeah, he's like, I do look at your blog. He's like, it's, it's a demographic that we're trying to reach from 16 to 24. Um, they want the women to have good experiences and they want their feedback, you know? And he's like, one of your blogs, it's a really great one. And she tries to name these other bigger blogs. He says, your names are mentioned in there as well, you know? So like, don't downplay what you do. You bring a, a good amount of, you know, research information for us to the table, she is getting ready to head to Amsterdam. She's going to have a layover in Heathrow, uh, London's airport. And she's talking to Keith. 
and he brings up the thing about oral because of course she was like that's a no go never right can't do that well we find out why so when she was in 10th grade she had a boyfriend and he essayed her he grabbed her hair so hard he ripped hair from her root um forcing her to suck his dick and he apparently uh beat her up pretty bad too so again i knew it had to be something pretty vicious someone taking control from you and not ever wanting to not have complete control you know always wanting to have complete control so i say from here on out I, I figured it had to be something pretty bad and it was um he's worried because he's like if you can't even talk about this how the hell are you gonna do it she's like i'm fine i'm fine i promise i promise so she gets on the plane first class luxury all the way he even had clothes available for her when she landed in heathrow um from harrods super nice she gets to amsterdam gets a text message from him he has a phone at the desk for her. he was supposed to meet her at lunch for three he was late um but he told her go ahead and get some lunch um and then she winds up going up to the suite he comes out of the bathroom he's got on nothing but a towel wrapped around his waist and then one around his neck and she's just beyond enthralled she did notice that the word sabrina was written across his heart so of course now she's wondering well who the hell is that you know um he got her some nice evening gowns as well beautiful gowns and she chose a black one to wear some gorgeous shoes she looks stunning they had dinner they talked conversation flowed pretty well they're both uh geeks and so they geeked out it was great um it started making her regret that she had put in the contract that after this night there's not going to be any more contact um she found herself really liking him we find out that he has like easter eggs in his game that people have been trying to figure out for months and no one's been able to do it and he of course is not going to give her anything and so she kept trying to get some secrets out of him it wouldn't work um they had a gorgeous night and he starts to massage her scalp and girl had a full-on panic attack she couldn't breathe he had to talk her through it she told adam what happened with that you know high school boyfriend he of course is like that's so fucked up um she hadn't thought to put in there about not being able to touch her hair and she apologized and he's like what you don't apologize for that you know and he's like whoever did that needs the shit beat out of them you know um that which was crazy to me but she, i felt bad for her in that moment she makes me go from feeling like annoyance with her and then i do feel bad for her because like trauma is real you know so i couldn't help but feel bad for old girl and so then they start kissing and it seems like they're gonna do it they wind up going to the couch she's ready to go and he was like not yet they go and well they were gonna go to the bed let me say it correctly and then they wind up going to the couch and they made out some more they're about to do it his phone rings and then it rings again and so he had his operations manager calling because basically the systems were down because of this update that they had done earlier that day so it's going to be a long night so he got her one of his computers and he you know she can work or play or whatever and then he told her to find a movie or whatever and eventually she winds up going to sleep she felt someone pick her up and she thought it was going to happen but he was just putting her to bed so the next morning they sleep until like 10 uh they catch a flight they head back she tried to study because he spent most of the time on the phone dealing with the crisis and so when they're about to well not not far from landing you know it was kind of like okay well what was gonna happen like that was our night she's like that's the agreement was just one night and she made a joke saying like you know i can get double the money because i can pay someone else no someone else can pay me to really get my virginity and he's like oh no your virginity is mine and he says that whether it's today or 10 years from now she goes there's a six month uh clause in the contract 
he's like, it's not going to be that long, but it's still like, it belongs, like, basically it belongs to me. I'm paying for this. So he's having a get together at his home. And then afterwards, he's like, they can get on his yacht and go how many ever, whatever far out to get into international waters and get it done. Well, she says, okay. He gives her a light kiss. He told her to keep the phone. Um, and he's like, you know, that way I can keep in contact with you. And he says, you said you were having issues with your phone. So this would be great. He's like, you can also do your blog post from here, you know? He leaves and she had made a comment. What did she say? She called Heath after he left. That's what happened. She called Heath and um, told Heath what was going to happen. And Heath was kind of like, okay, but hopefully he doesn't strangle you and throw you overboard. And I was like, she, of course, was like, why would you say something like that? You know, he's like, I don't really think he'll do it, you know. She's like, but I did, but he says, when I did some research on him, I did find that he was involved in this really huge bullying case when he was younger. So he's a runner and other people on the team had beat him up so bad. He was in critical condition for a week. And so his uncle, you know, of course, wound up suing the school board or whatever, but it was like a really big case. And that kind of makes sense because when she first saw him, she had told him, like, you don't look like a geek. And he kind of made the comment, you know, well, when you get tired of people, you know, um, tossing you around, you get to a place where they can't do it to you anymore. So I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. He had also told her about the mom, his mom being an alcoholic. So he wound up going to move with his uncle um, once, you know, the mother clearly couldn't take care of him and he had told her all that stuff in Amsterdam while they were having their discussion during dinner so um she didn't know the part about him you know going to live with the uncle and all that type of stuff she found out some stuff as they were talking so then her friend from downstairs Alex comes up her mom is the one that is her landlord and she of course had saw some man come and of course wants details anyone would and she doesn't want to go into too many details because again they're supposed to do this do this and then go their separate ways so to her there's really no point in telling too much information about him and i agree you know i would agree with that anyway just because it's new and you don't need everybody in your business so But I might be like that, you know, even if it's not new, like you just don't need everybody in your shit. You just don't. So then Alex invites her to come down and have dinner with them. And of course, you know, girl is not going to turn down a free meal. Alex and her mom helped me get ready. And she gets to, she thought he lived in Balboa, which is where, you know, the rich folks stay. Um, But he actually lives on an island within it. So you either go by bridge or by boat so you'd have to walk over this bridge or boat and of course it's a beautiful home he tells her how beautiful she looks uh find out that the yacht is being serviced so they can't take it out to die which means they're not fucking so while they're at this little shindig she notices a woman named Lindsay walker who's married by the way she seems to be very handsy when it comes to adam and so eventually you know they finally leave because the group of people that came to the um dinner they were going uh to a concert and so afterwards they go outside adam and mia and it's super it's so beautiful california night gets cooler so we had a heater out there but she was okay she didn't need it she just wanted to wrap herself in him for right now his phone is constantly going off he's constantly answering texts and she wanted him to turn it off and he was like, you're going to make it worth my while. And she's like, yeah. So she goes and they start making out. And then his phone buzzed again. 
And she's like, well, you just turn the fucking thing off, you know? So he turned it off. And then he wind up fingering her and bringing her to come. Like she came like twice. And the second time she came, he told her, I want you to say my name when you come. And sure enough, that bitch was like, Adam, Adam, Adam. And so she was happy. So then Adam was like, tomorrow they're going to make a day of it. He's going to come and get her around 11 in the morning. And she's like, okay. So she goes back. She's all wired. So she turns on the game. And then the name Magnus pops up. So Magnus is the name of Adam Drake's character on there. He's Magnus. And he had told her that on the plane on the way back from Amsterdam. And so I was like, oh, shoot, my theory was all wrong. Because I was thinking, like, he must be falling. ain't falling one. But I guess he's not. So then they chit chat a little back and forth. And then he's like, you can go to sleep and she does he comes and picks her up the next day they go out um and they have a really great time they have a great swim good conversation she does tell him the truth about a couple things and we find a little bit more her father apparently was married and was really well off and thus the reason he was able to give the mom so much money So, of course, Adam's just kind of like, well, why didn't you just go to him for money? And she's like, why would I do that when he didn't want anything to do with me? Why would I want anything to do with him? So then she told him um, when it came, it was something with the situation with the boyfriend from high school, how she had never pressed charges and she felt like a coward for it. um, But she just didn't think anyone would believe her and she didn't want to put herself through it. So then they start kissing and then he starts eating her pussy, makes her come. And she's thinking like, okay, here's the deal. She's nervous on the inside and yet she wanted it. And then they're going at it and it looks like it's about to happen. And he's like, I can't do it. He stops. She's furious because she wanted him to do it. Even though in her mind, she was kind of wondering if it was going to happen or not. And I think maybe something maybe came across her face, possibly, that made him feel like maybe she wasn't ready. I don't know. Because you can't really hide your face. Um, (laughs) So she got pissed. She went to her room and then um, went to the gym. He was already in there on the treadmill. She got on the other one. And she just kept going. And he stopped her. And he's like, I just don't want to do anything to hurt you. I can never forgive myself if that happened. And she, of course, was just kind of like tired of this. She's like, because it's like you keep finding an excuse to not do it, you know? So he told her just one more night, just one more night. So she goes back home. Heath is at her apartment. He had been trying to reach her and had been able to get her. And <laughs> apparently her mom had been trying to get in contact with her too. So she started calling him. So he got worried so he came over to her place and so adam leaves and he's like did like okay did everything like go down you know like what's going on this is supposed to be like this one night thing this keeps getting dragged out he's playing some type of game because it just doesn't make sense and heath was like i wonder if he's really even gonna pay like because this really feels like a game But he had told her that he would pay her half the money that Monday and then the rest once they did the deed. But again, it's like you're dragging this out. But why? Who knows? And so Heath was kind of like, does he get off on denying himself? Like, what is it? Like, (laughs) he's just trying to figure out what is going on. So he told her to be careful because that man is going to spit you out i'm sorry chew you up and spit you out and you are not going to survive it you know so the evening comes and sure enough adam picks her up takes her to go to his family's house and oh there's a couple things i forgot to mention on the boat him and Lindsay, they did used to fuck a long time ago so she knows that and it kind of makes sense the way she was being all handsy with him but that's still fucked up because bitch you're married but i guess if your husband ain't gonna say nothing you know who the heck is anybody else 
she goes to the family house and she has a really great time um he has a cousin who's about the same age as him i think he's autistic or he's or on the spectrum however you want to put it and he paints different characters for dungeons and dragons um their game pieces even though they haven't played in like a long time he still paints them but he also works at de so they have a nice little conversation and the guy winds up painting her um a character it was really sweet and so she asked him why did you bring me to meet your family he said you asked me who i who did i love and i was showing you who i love my family but again here's the thing you all have this agreement, but it's like both of you are in this. So if one person wants more or if both of you want more, you all can, let me say it correctly. If both of you want more, y'all can pursue that. Y'all can decide that. It's not like a court is going to come in and decipher this shit, whether or not you can spend more time together. So like, I'm annoyed at this point. I am seriously annoyed, not just with her. I'm going to know it with both they ass. <laughs> so Mia's at John's place. They were supposed to have a, a group, a study group meeting there. But guess what? Everyone conveniently canceled, which makes me believe no one was ever invited outside of Mia. But anyway, so they're studying and then her mind has been completely on the situation she's going through, right? And he breaks out a bottle of wine. She's distracted and he just keeps filling her cup every time she drinks it. So they've gone through like two bottles and she's drunk. She's got to be to work in a couple of hours because she has the midnight shift. And John's like, oh, you can just stay here and sleep it off. She's like, no, I don't want to do that. And he's like, no, 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 it's fine. It's OK. You can just, you know, you can just stay here you don't you can't drive you know she's like i'll call a ride he kept objecting but she was able to get outside get to her car so she's got the new phone the only number programmed is adams and heath so she tried to call heath but she hit adam and so she says heath i need you and adam goes what's wrong are you in trouble and she's like, oh, no, I thought I was calling Heath. He's like, no, are you in trouble? Like, what's going on? And so she starts babbling, saying, I got drunk by mistake. He kept refilling my glass, you know. So he says, open the app and send me your location. So she does it. He's like, I'm on my way. John comes out. He's got these expensive study guides. He's like, I feel bad that we didn't get through everything. You can, you know, hold these, you know what I mean? And she's like um he's telling her to come inside she's like no someone's coming and um she has to throw up so she winds up getting out of the car but she dry heaves nothing comes out and then he was you know still trying to get her to come in and he grabbed her arm and she sees like his reaction to her is totally different you know he got aggressive and she winds up falling back pulling away from him and thankfully adam pulled up and saw everything so he runs over there he told the guy of course you know you get the fuck away from her john's like what are you like her boyfriend or something like that and uh the dude took a swing at adam and fell on his ass and he was he was because he was tipsy too and she wasn't accepting his advances and what i believe happened is he decided well i'm gonna go another route and this is where that persistence bullshit with certain stuff is it's just not okay somebody tell you no they don't want you you need to accept that shit the way that he kept asking her it's like she kept telling him no so now i'm gonna figure out a way to get you and because i don't think it's possible that you just don't want me i think you need your guard down and so i'll help you get your guard down so then you'll give me a shot and look how dangerous that could have been for her you know because he clearly was not who he was you know pretending to be because he clearly was pretending to be something else and i kind of wonder what the hell happened at his ivy league school we you know i'm I'm wondering like 
did he do something and that's why he had to leave like I just kind of wonder because he clearly isn't who he portrays he's not that person he's not a good guy he's not that he wound up calling her a bitch and some other stuff too so he was drunk so that real shit came out a lot a lot easier so he takes her um adam gets her in the car and he gets her home and before while they were in the car she did ask him are you playing with me and he didn't say anything so then he gets her to her place he calls into her work and calls out for her because there was no way she was gonna make it um, he gives her an aspirin and some water and she's like, let's just do it now. Let's just get it over with, you know? And he says, um, he t- does tell her there's money in your account. Like I gave it to you and she hadn't even checked her account to see. And she just kind of was like ready to do it. But he was like, I'm not going to do it. And you drunk, you know? And she thought, Oh, he said to her, you're just going to lay on your back and think about medical school anyway. Right. Because she had made that comment and um, she apologized to him because she had told him that he was empty. (laughs) And then he said to her, you aren't wrong. I say, oh, Lord, what the hell you really got going on? So she wakes up the next morning. She gets a call from her mom who's been worried about her. And she tried to lie, told her mom she was working extra steps. Her mom was like, I called your job. She's like, what is going on? Are you involved with someone? Like, are you dating? Like, what's going on? So she just kind of let her mom know she's seeing somebody. It's nothing serious. She doesn't want to talk about it. Leave it at that. Um, She thinks the mom's dating too, but the mom, I don't, I don't know. She thinks the mom is, but. The mom's got something going on, but she isn't saying what it is. So she gets off the phone, plays a little DE, and then she gets a text message from Adam to meet at a location in Old Town, which is like walking distance away from her. So she goes uh, and her car's outside and he had already got it back home for her. And he's like, well, I figure you didn't want to deal with that douchebag again, you know, so he got her car back. So anyway, she goes to the location. It's like a complex, really nice place. And he's like, you know, do you like it? You know, and she's like, what is this? You know, and he's like, it's something he recently acquired. So she's like, okay, so why am I here? Well, he was like, I was thinking like you would maybe move here. So now this feels like she's trying, he's trying to keep her as like some little mistress or something. And he, she says that to him and he's like, why are you always twisting everything? It's not like that. He's like, I was going to offer this at the same price that you're paying now. She's like, but why would you do that? You know, but then they wind up having this passionate kiss and he tells her one more night. I have business in the Caribbean coming up for the, for a week. And, um, one more, you know, let's do this and then it'll be, we'll complete everything. Right. So she agreed to do it. She had checked her bank account. He he had paid half the money and she, what did she get? Um, they were close to a little Cuban place. And so they went in there to get some food. Lindsay happens to be walking by and she decides to, um, start playing it. Mia does with him and starts rubbing on him and laying on him and shit and he's playing right along you know and Lindsay's just kind of looking in shock like what the hell is going on so Lindsay's having a party on Friday and he tells Lindsay yeah um um, uh, what's her name Amelia will be there you know she's going to be my plus one so she leaves and we find out she apparently had filed for divorce from her husband jerome so my thing is why not just tell her you're not interested you don't you like i don't see you like that anymore right like our time that we fucked around we fucked around and that was that but that's it i don't get why not just tell her that i don't know 
but anyway i digress so he also wants her to come to this event so he asked her to go and she's like okay but again here we are we're drying this bullshit out and but she agrees to go so what are you gonna do she goes to Heath's place they bake burgers uh they make salad dessert stuff like that and she asked him how to do a hand job because she had read something in Cosmo and he's like "Uh, uh, uh-uh can't do that I'll show you so he showed her how to do it with the banana so she goes to the party at Lindsay's house in Laguna Beach and he was stuck to Mia that whole night Lindsay acted like she was busy doing other stuff so it worked they go back to his house they watch like Lord of the Rings they have movie popcorn you know and she winds up giving him a hand job (laughs) <laughs> because she was thinking about the whole thing with him possibly like getting like denying himself like that's how he gets off and so she decided well i'm gonna jack him off and see if he likes it and of course he liked it and they went and took a shower he wound up fingering her gave her another shirt to wear and then it was time for bed she goes to his room we get a little bit more information so he had a sister named sabrina so that's who that is for on his heart and she had found a picture of sabrina and him when they were younger and we find out that she died of an overdose at 20 so it's starting to make sense his whole issue with addiction you got a mother that was an alcoholic your you know um sister was a drug addict and we find out sabrina used to prostitute herself out for drugs and stuff it's starting to make sense as for well no, i'm not gonna say it's starting to make sense but it makes sense as far as why he's probably trying to put this off but you've already exchanged money you've already given her half the money and y'all been doing sexual stuff so it's still prostitution you know i mean <laughs> you still a john you just aren't like a horrible one but you still like a little dirty John, you know, we'll just call you a John instead of a dirty John, you know? (laughs) So she, um, you know, again, it feels like this is not going to happen, but, and and it, I don't know either. Like at this point, I'm like, is this ever going to happen? Cause this just seems like another barrier, another issue that, his whole sister was a prostitute so that's an issue so i don't know this is just i don't know they're annoying me so when mia gets back to her place um they didn't do much talking in the car by the way when they woke up the next morning he drove her back um she had missed some calls from her mom and so she called her mom first her mom was happy you know telling her that everything was fine the ranch was good she had some really good news to tell her when she came up all this great stuff um She thought her mom had a boyfriend and said that to her mom. And her mom's like, there is no one in Anza, California. And um, she finally told her mother that she had saw those final notices about the mortgage. And her mother was like, you've been worried about this since January? Like, she's like, everything's fine. I've gotten it taken care of. You know, she's like, I'll probably be able to start taking people in by summer. You know, and so she's ecstatic. So she gets off the phone and she also had told her mom i'm sorry before she got off the phone that she was going to be hitting the books really hard this coming week and so she can only be reached via text and email because she's going to be in the caribbean with fucking adam you know so her mom was finding that so then she decides she's not going to have sex with him she calls heath and she asks heath to send the money back and that's her plan once she comes back from the caribbean there's no more she is going to cut off all contact with him of course he's trying to understand what's going on why you even going you know but she's not giving him any answers however she's going to be going to a family dinner crazy right you spending all this time with him this is just crazy so she's going to go to his I'm sorry, her, his uncle's house, which is, you know, the family's going to be there, cousins and stuff like that. And so while she was there, his, his uncle Peter 
talked to her while she was putting the chicken on the kebab. She was about to throw up. Um, and he kind of let her know, like, don't let him railroad you. He'll respect you for it. You know, he's really headstrong. He always has been. But don't let him just roll all over you, you know? So then after they ate, she left and she went and uh, went into William's room where he has all the different figurines. Lindsay brings her ass in there. Um, she had showed up with a younger boyfriend. So she pops up in the room and she's like, this isn't Adam's room. It's William's. And she's like, I know that I've been here before. I was just looking at the figurines. And then she was pretty much just trying to let her know that she's known these people for a long time and all this type of stuff. And that Adam's married to his work. That's never going to change and all this type of stuff. And I'm just kind of like, you're not telling her anything earth shattering. The man picks up his phone every time it fucking buzzes or rings. So he's, he's a workaholic. She knows that. Like, you're not telling her something so, you know, again, earth shattering. You're just not, you know? So she could have kept her little conversation. And so then... Adam comes in and he's like, he's got to go. Something happened. He's got to uh, deal with at his company. They leave. She's in the car. She's like, basically, why did you bid on me? Like, what type of games are you playing? You know? And he's just like, there you go. Twisting stuff around again. He's like, we'll have this conversation. Not right now. He's like, you got an early shift that you got to get ready for. And I've got to get to the office to deal with, you know, the fire to put out, you know. So she gets out the car and she feels like, you know what, he wants to keep his secret. She'll keep hers, too, um, with the whole, you know, basically ending it once they come back from St. Lucia. So they get to St. Lucia. Beautiful, gorgeous resort. He's part owner. And, um, he's got things to do cause this is a business trip. Okay. Um, they go back to the room. They want, she winds up giving him a blow job, but she told him before she's just like, just keep, just don't put your hands in my hair. That's it. And he's like, that's fine. I can do it. So she sucked him off until he came and he came on her breast and her stomach. Um, and then he went, he checked on work or whatever, but apparently when he came back, he was upset because he had got, he had gotten an email from Heath. And the email that he sent basically was saying that they were returning the money and that when, you know, she comes back, there's to be no contact. So, of course, she's like, I'm sorry, he's like, I thought something real was happening here between us. But I guess I'm wrong because I'm hearing all this stuff from Heath and not from you, you know. And she's like, you had no intention of sleeping with me. You just keep dragging this out. And she's like, I was giving the money back so that the money was off the table. We could just leave it. And then that's just kind of it. Well, they, of course, finally wind up fucking. Afterwards, he went kind of back being cold. He went, dove into his work. She's pissed. She feels ignored. So she went and got in the pool, was doing laps because she just needed to burn off her energy. He comes to the pool, tries to stop her. And she's like, I mean why are you bothering me now? Like you just fucked me and then ignored me. And he's like, I'm sorry. I retreat into my work when I need to think. And she's like, yeah, but you could have said something to me. Cause when you don't, it makes me feel like a piece of trash. That's how it, that's, is this how you treat your fuck buddies? And he's like, you're not a fuck buddy, you know? And he tells her like, basically after they did it, he, almost felt like he couldn't stop like he wanted to do it again like he feels like he can never get enough of her and so they wind up doing it again um he's still wired she's tired so he goes um off but he said the next day he was going to take it off so they could go sightseeing and stuff like that he does have meetings because this is a work trip you know and so he took off took a little walk and came back later kissed her and uh fell asleep next day they go out um they go to some one of the falls 
and afterwards they go to dinner he confesses something to her he tells her that he had talked to her about the auction previously and she's kind of like wait a minute that's not possible i hadn't met you well he admits that he is the fallen one so apparently what he does is he joins different groups um he likes to help them with their questions and their quests and really enjoy you know kind of seeing the game through a different group size well when he jumped into their group he really loved it and so he just kind of stayed and so a lot of the things about him she assumed you know he never said he was in school he you know she assumed since he was on the east coast he was went to an east coast school so a lot of things was just kind of assumed on her part and she of course goes super quiet because this is a this is a mind fuck right she really liked fallen one she had developed an attachment to him to that you know um well to him to that person they had talked a lot they had communicated so much she revealed so much about her mother's sickness and all these different things and so it's just kind of like you've known all these different things about me i'm still trying to pull pieces about you it feels really unfair and she definitely feels deceived and i can't knock her for feeling that way they go back to the room kind of in silence she doesn't say too much you know to him and then she wants to fuck because she doesn't want to talk and he knows that and so he's like fingering her and asking her questions at the same time and they have this whole blowout and basically all of their truths come out so he tells her he really did a number on you and she's thinking about the high school boyfriend and he says no your father he's like you won't allow anyone to be close to you because everything is based upon him and what he did to you and your mom you know he fucked your mom and you over so every man is going to do the same thing and it's hitting her and she decides she's going to hit him back and so she says to him you're the one who joined this auction to try and save me you keep wanting to be this knight in shining armor you know but i'm not your sister and you can't save me and he goes i know that but she also tells him you're an addict too but the difference is you're addicted to work and so our society doesn't look at that addiction because you know what you're supposed to be a hard worker right that's a good thing you're supposed to do that and so being that you work so much over 100 hours a week it just looks like you're dedicated but she's like but you're addicted to it she's like when you don't work you feel like you're going through withdrawals and she's like don't think i don't know that after last night you went you went up to the business room uh, conference room to get your fix and she goes you know maybe i'll distract you for a moment but you're gonna need that fix again and he got pissed so he went and got his stuff came out the shower and was like he's getting another room and he said to her i was ready for a woman in my life but you're just a scared little girl and he left she just sat there tears couldn't even come eventually she was able to fall asleep the next morning he sent a note to let her know that he was not flying back with her he had business that was going to keep him there for another week but he had made her arrangements so she would get back home safely she gets back to her place she sleeps in um afterwards she calls her mom to let her know she's all right she goes to work um the next day she's put she gets she gets a formal warning because all the time she's missed and when she came back home heath was there she's still pissed at him for sending that email in the middle middle of the trip and he says i thought i was doing the right thing 
you know, I was trying to help. And she's like, you just caused a big problem. And honestly, the email, yes, his little ass could have waited and did it at the end of the week. But I think he did it because he wanted it to blow up. I think he saw that there's things going on on both sides. Nobody's being fully honest. But if I send this email, everybody is going to have to be extremely honest. And that's what he did. And maybe it was file. You know, maybe, but it got them to say the things that needed to be said. So he asked her, you know, she had packed up all the stuff he had given her in a box. And Heath was like, you know, I can take it, you know, for you. And she's like, no, I can do this. He's not going to be there anyway. So they get to the place. They send him upstairs. And his assistant comes out, Adams, and she says, oh, he'll be out. He'll be, he'll be right out. And she's like, who? And she goes, Mr. Drake. And she's like, he's supposed to still be in the Caribbean. And the woman says, oh, no, he came back yesterday. And so he comes out with Lindsay. And she's like stuck, right? And so he whispers something in Lindsay's ear. Lindsay, they both laughed and that girl bolted out of there. She hauled ass. Got to somebody's car and just started crying. And when Heath found her, he's like, what the hell happened? And she's like, just get me the fuck out of here, please. He's like, you got to tell me what's going on. Like, what the hell happened? And she was like, it's just all fucked up. It's just all so fucked up, you know? And so Heath is like, maybe you need some more time away. Like when you go up to your mom after graduation, maybe you need to spend the whole summer there or maybe even take a year. You know, you've got, you've got time. You need to spend time with your mom, you know? And she feels like going back to Anza, California is going backwards. He's like, no, it's not. You need some time because like, basically you fucked up. And he told her, you need to quit that job anyway. You can make more money on your blog if you put more effort into it. He's like, I've created a template for you so that you can add more ad space. You know, you don't have to do that job. Plus, there's other jobs that you can get. And so the next day, she goes in and she quits the job. She graduates and then she heads up to her mom's ranch. Um, her mom does have good news. She got a letter from a foundation that helps cancer patients. Um, it paid off half of her mortgage. And then the rest of it, they're going to do on an interest-free loan over a 20-year period. She was able to do renovations, all kind of different things. So it's been, that's why she's been so happy. This is what she's been so excited about. Mia's like, oh my gosh, mom, this is just so amazing. Uh, she was just so excited. So her mom then asked her about, What's going on with her, with the guy she was dating? She said, all I'm going to say is there was someone. It didn't work out. Schedules, things like that just didn't work out. So she goes into a routine of working with the animals. She has a horse and the different chores that have to be done and things like that. Just kind of working herself to exhaustion, going to sleep at night, doing it all over again the next day. So Heath comes up a week later because he's coming up to take pictures because he's going to set up a website and everything. And he wants to know what happened because, again, she never really fully went into detail. She did tell Heath about the fact that Adam was fallen one. And he says, oh, that's why he seemed familiar. <laughs> uh, so... He tells her, you know, your mom's telling me that you're working yourself to exhaustion. You're not really eating a lot. Like, you've got to get it together. And she's just still doing the I'm fine X, Y, and Z. So then her and her mom have a discussion, and she finally asks her mom who the sperm donor's name was. His first name was Gerard. I don't remember the last name. Uh, he has three other children. They're all older. They're, like, in their 30s. 
he's a real estate person, so that's where he's made all his money. And she's written a letter to him, but she hasn't sent it. She thinks she never will. But it's just an honest letter basically saying how she did want a relationship with a father. Um, and she turned to hating him because that basically gave her the guard that she needed. And so the way she's looking at her life now is she kind of wants to uh, patch up any holes in her heart by building that fortress up again, you know, so no one can hurt her. So her mom comes out, tells her, you know, they've got some people that have booked. Uh, someone's booked the Roy Rogers room. She's named all the different rooms um, after cowboy characters. And the Roy Rogers room is like the best room there. So she's doing chores. Her mother comes and is like, let me introduce you to our guest. And yes, it is our boy, Adam Drake. She they do the whole high thing. Her mother tells her he's going to be joining them for dinner they leave um she's kind of standing there wondering if he's going to bring Lindsay up to like rub you know her face in it and i'm like i hope not because there's no need to do that like you've done it leave her alone well he isn't bringing somebody he he's only there himself um he just has a reservation for him um she's like okay at least she didn't have to look at him with Lindsay again you know so while they're at dinner mom's like oh you should take him for a hike and all this type of stuff and Mia's like well you know I'm more so a runner and he's like well I run too so the mom's like okay then you guys can you know have a run so they go for a run and they finally have a little conversation and, of course, she was trying to avoid at all costs. He tells her he's sorry. He's not with Lindsay. Lindsay had come by for lunch, and he was going to let her know that, you know, nothing was going on with them, and it was never going to happen again, you know. But what happened was when he heard that Mia was there, he thought she had come to talk to him. So when he saw the box, he got mad. And so that's why he did the whole put his arm around Lindsay thing and do the laugh he's like it was wrong I'm sorry I shouldn't have done that you know that was awful of me I knew it was wrong the minute I did it you know and I think some relief went through her when she heard that but he just really wanted her to admit that she cared and so she was honest. She said, I do care, but she still wants to keep her distance. And so we also find out he took a leave of absence from work. Don't know how long. He says he just wants to see how long he can go without it. And clearly she had hit a nerve. They both hit a nerve with each other. And, you know, she's got daddy issues and he's addicted to work, you know. So... She again, she's resided. I'm going to keep my distance from him. And he did, uh, he did ask her about her MCAT test, if she was still going to take it, because he had talked to uh, Heath. And he said she was kind of on the fence if she was even going to take it. And she's like, I've already sent it in. It was way too much money. But what she didn't tell him was that she's not really sure she's going to show up. She's just a mess. Next day, he leaves. Um, he comes back she goes to do the whole housekeeping thing and she sees some papers the name listed on those papers is the same one that was listed on her mom's paperwork um and she realizes that adam drake is the benefactor these dates on these papers they date from back before um she even put up for this auction so now she's spiraling, right? So then Adam comes back and she jumps in her car. She leaves. He follows her. They get to a parking lot. He tells her, you know, when they were talking all those different times and she was talking about her mom, he had put in motion a way to help her. And he told her he was in love with her and she didn't want him to say it because she wasn't ready to like say it herself and receive it. And the truth is she i mean she fucked up you know and so she's crying like a baby 
and she's like i just can't do this like i can't you know so she left went back home her mom was kind of like clearly you know him before this is that man you were dating right she she admits it she says yes but her mother lets her know you cannot base your life upon what happened to me sweetheart you know she's like everyone is not like your father and she's like but mom you haven't dated since dad and she's like well i didn't want to bring anybody around you because i didn't trust myself the judgment right my judgment about who i brought around you you are the most important thing to me she's like if something happened to you because i made a bad decision that's not something i could live with and so therefore it was easier for me just to not you know just not to bring anybody around she's like but i'm open to it now i'm good you know she's like you need to be open to it she says you're too young to be that way to feel so jaded you're too young you know stop closing yourself off and so she um told also told her he apparently told her he was leaving early he's checking out the next morning so she runs to his room but he's not there and so she starts crying and then he pops up he had just gone for a walk but she thought he had left and so she was spiraling because of that she finally does tell him that she loves him and she's like i'm sorry i was afraid and all this type of stuff they go inside she doesn't know if they're gonna have a great sex session or just sit and watch movies but whatever it's gonna be it's gonna be together and that makes her happy and that's how it ends so again like i told you in the beginning there's like 10 books in this series and i'm not doing that so this is the beginning of adam and uh, mia's story and there's two more books about them so if you guys want to continue that journey you guys can you got a little jump start into the series and like i said there's some standalones in there as well but what did you guys think i really liked it okay but it annoyed me but i did like it like there were some great parts but they were just they were exhausting to me that's that's the best way i can describe it they just exhausted me you know and that's probably why i feel like okay we'll just do the one book because <laughs> i'm like two more books of them being indecisive not talking it, it would just drive me a little up the wall but for what this was i did like it i feel like it could have been a standalone but i don't know what the rest of their story is going to be so if you guys have read it or if you're going to read it feel free to drop down in the comments and let me know um always let me know what you guys think of the videos any suggestions you have drop down in the comment section and let me know as well if you are in the market for a beautiful notebook or journal, I do have those available and the links are going to be available down below in the description section. Thank you so much for listening week in and week out. I really do appreciate you all. Make sure you like and subscribe and share. And as always, I truly do thank you all for your support and thank you for tuning in to the Always Reading Book Club.